I'm Ros Atkins, welcome to Outside Source. We're close to three weeks into Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the deadly attacks on civilians continue. In the besieged city of Mariupol, hundreds are feared dead after a theater where civilians were sheltering was bombed. President Zelensky has appealed to the US Congress for more help. He's calling again for the West to impose a no-fly zone over Ukraine. I have a need. I need to protect uh, our sky. I need your decision, your help, which means exactly the same, the same you feel when you hear the words, I have a dream. President Biden, meanwhile, has approved another $800 million of military support for Ukraine. He says President Putin's military offensive must be stopped. That's our goal. Make Putin pay the price, weaken his position, while strengthening the hand of the Ukrainians on the battlefield and at the negotiating table. And after years detained in Iran, Nazanin Zaghari Ratcliffe has arrived in Oman. She's on her way back home to the UK. Ukrainians have been under attack from Russia for close to three weeks now. There have been an awful lot of developments, both on the ground and on the diplomatic front in the last 24 hours. Let me take you through them part by part, beginning with Russia's continued attack on a number of Ukrainian cities. It's been indiscriminately bombing civilians in areas amongst them. President Putin again said Russia is not targeting civilians, but if we look at what's actually happening, that would appear to not be true. The latest attack is on a theater in the southern city of Mariupol. It was filled with hundreds of people, we were told, who were, threat who were sheltering from the bombardment. These pictures have just come in. Mariupol's deputy mayor has told the BBC more than 1,000 people were inside when it was attacked. We have no details of casualty numbers, but the continuing bombardment is making it impossible for rescue workers to reach the theatre at the moment, so those statistics will be some time in coming. Then there's another attack, a school in Mariupol. The city is under siege. It's surrounded. There is continuous shelling, which is why those rescue workers can't reach the theatre. Nearly 1,500 people have already died there, and we know there are now two mass graves in the city. You can see them marked on the map. For two weeks there, there's been no clean water, electricity or gas. So that means no heating at a time when temperatures are below freezing at night. And the BBC is reporting that in one location, hundreds of people are crammed into the basement of a large public building, but they're running out of food, with many also in need of urgent medical help. While Russian troops are also still holding 400 people, including doctors and patients, inside the hospital we've marked here. The first evacuations did take place this week, but very few people have been able to escape this city. One who did describes what it's like back inside Mariupol. 